And welcome back once again to the High School Sports Page, brought to you by the Burns Insurance Group. They have locations in Nashville, uh, out near Elm Hill Pike, uh, in Mount Juliet, and in Franklin as well. Uh, stop by their office, give them a call. I think you'll be glad you did. Uh, they'll be glad to give you a quote and help you save some money and give you great coverage, uh, regardless of your insurance needs. We're going to take a look now at uh, polls that Terry and I have done throughout the season. I do a statewide poll. Terry does a mid-state poll. We'll start with Division II, single A, FRA, still number one in my poll, North Point Christian uh, in South Haven, Mississippi, uh, still number two, but I have moved St. George's to number three. The Griffins replaced Davidson Academy, who lost to DCA last week. In the mid-state, uh, Murphy, I've got Franklin Road Academy, still number one after their open date. BGA moves into the second spot after an open date. As a matter of fact, those two play each other. We'll talk about that later uh, Friday night. Donaldson Christian moves back into the number three spot after a huge 28-16 win over Davidson Academy. Terry, in the double-A poll, uh, no changes for the second straight week in my poll. Brentwood Academy, Christian Brothers, and MBA uh, still hold those top three spots. Christian Brothers plays MUS uh, this week in the season, regular season finale. Don't be surprised if Christian Brothers knocks them off. Would not be surprised. No change likewise in the mid-state. Brentwood Academy had a big win over the University of Christian of Florida. MBA knocked off Baylor. And uh, in spite of that, Baylor stays at number three uh, in spite of losing to the Big Red. The first of our three football coaches tonight, uh, Charlie Lansdell, the head football coach at Columbia Academy with us. He brought a bit of an entourage with him this evening. Coach, welcome to the show. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Charlie, I have joked all season long uh, about the fact that uh, people at Columbia Academy need to send TSSAA a thank you note for moving you all to Region 4 and what traditionally the teams that have been in Region 4 to Region 5. That means they're going west where all the power right. is and you guys are going east. Now, I don't mean to downplay the teams in the east, but no. definitely the top part of the bracket is the easier road to Cookville. Well, uh, you're right. The West has uh, uh, quite a few tough teams, without a shadow of a doubt. And, uh, you know, we're going to go where the TSSAA sends us, and uh, we're going to approach it week by week like we have done. And, um, you know, hopefully we'll get a chance to play one of those teams in the West. Coach, your only loss was in your opener to one point to a very good Franklin Road Academy team. As, as we know, they're still undefeated, and they've got a very good chance in Division II single A. Uh, but only one team has lost to you by uh, less than 17 points, and that was Fayetteville. Having said that, did you expect your team to be as dominant uh, this season as they've been at this point in time? You know, I don't think we went into the uh, to the season thinking we were going to be uh, dominant. Um, we went into the season uh, understanding that that we had a lot of talent, and uh, if we uh, played up to our capabilities and and did what we were supposed to do, we knew that uh, we can win some ball games. Uh, but things have just worked out the way they have, you know, so far, and uh, uh, this team's done a pretty good job so far. Mm -hmm. Coach, you've got two key workhorses on your team, both seniors, I think. Taylor Thompson uh, with 1,376 all-purpose yards and right. Thomas Garrison about 1,100 all-purpose yards. Uh, Taylor does most of his work as a receiver while Thomas's are kind of equally split, but obviously yeah. these two guys are a big part of your team this year, uh, not only on the field but off the field as well. Uh, without a uh, shadow of a doubt, yes, uh, Taylor and Thomas both are, are a big part of our uh, school, like you said, uh, off the football field as well. Uh, but on the football field, uh, they've accomplished so many personal uh, records there at school. Uh, matter of fact, Taylor, uh, I believe, checking the TSSAA website and uh, career receiving yards, uh, total career receiving yards, uh, He's at four right now, but could possibly move into that third uh, position. Uh, and career receptions, uh, as far as a TSSAA wow. record of all time. Um, and, and that's just a couple of things, you know. He's, uh, he's definitely been a, a big playmaker for us in, in key games. And uh, Thomas, like you said, uh, he, he runs the ball and, uh, and and also catches the ball for us also and uh, they've just been both a, 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 you know a, a two guys that any team would like to have uh, I believe they both can play quarterback too 
Hmm. Uh, so uh, I use them as many different ways as I possibly can. Well, Coach, one other way we know uh, you've used Thomas Garrison as your as, a, as your kicker and punter. Uh, he's put over 73 yards of his kickoffs into the end zone. Uh, he's converted on 55 of 57 extra points yeah. and uh, also averaging 35 yards per punt. Uh, without a doubt, kicking game obviously important. He's, got a, he's one of your most valuable assets, I would assume, a, as your kicker. Yeah, uh, Thomas is, is gifted. He's gifted uh, in kicking. Um, the, the special thing about that young man is what many people don't know is, uh, you know, Thomas may run a 50-yard touchdown, kick the extra point, turn around and, and kick off and put the ball through the back of the end zone and then play defense. And he also punts and returns kickoffs and returns punts for us. So uh, he's constantly on the field. He never comes off the, the field. The only time he gets to come off is at halftime in the end of the game, right? <laughs> That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Yet he still has a, a strong enough leg uh, to put that ball out the back of the end zone on kickoffs every time and and that's been a big help for us when teams have to march the entire field 80 yards uh, it definitely helps us out and uh, we've been very proud of him and all that he's accomplished he w he's our first Mr. Football finalist uh, I believe uh, at Columbia Academy and uh, he was a Mr. Football finalist last year and uh, we think he's got a good shot this year too Coach, you, uh, you've put a lot of points on the board. You've put a lot of yards in the record books. Yeah. Uh, but your defense is pretty, pretty good, too, pretty stingy. I looked on your stat sheet, and, and I think I found 16 players that had 10 or more tackles uh, yeah. for the season already. So you're running a lot of kids in and out. And, and yeah. I know some of that's probably from having an early lead, but it also bodes well for next year as well with that many kids having that much experience. Uh, with that, uh, Without a doubt, we, we have uh, a lot of competition at practice. Uh, in order to play, uh, there's a lot of competition uh, at Columbia Academy. And uh, we have a lot of young kids uh, who can play on Friday nights. Um, we have seven seniors, we have eight juniors, and I believe we have 55 on the roster now. Wow. And so we have a lot of kids that can play. And, uh, and I think that's why uh, you see the numbers that you see. Uh, like you said, we a lot of these uh, come from only playing half a game, the starters play, coming out at halftime and, and playing the younger kids and the JV kids. Um, but we also have a lot of talent, and uh, we, we feel like we'll be good for years to come. Coach, you wrap up the regular season uh, Friday night at your place with a potentially uh, dangerous Huntland Hornet team. They're six and three on the year, I believe, five and two in your region. Uh, what What do you feel like is going to be important for you all to come away with a win? Uh, tell us a little bit about what Huntland does and 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 to make sure you're going to be uh, strong as you enter the playoffs uh, week after next. Huntland does a lot of the same things we do offensively. They're a wing T type team, uh, and uh, so we should be well prepared for them. Uh, because we practice against ourselves, you know, during the week. Um, that in order to, to prepare us for the playoffs, if we just continue to do what we've done up to this point, and that's take it one week at a time, and not get too uh, ahead of ourselves, not worry about what's going on in the West, or who we're going to face in the East in the playoffs, and worry about Friday night, and that's Huntland, uh, I think we'll be okay. Coach, I talk to a lot of people who do what you do for a living all across the state, and they all tell me in order to have a successful program, first of all, you've got to have great players. Right. Uh, you've got to have a great coaching staff. You've got to have administrative support. And you've got to have great community support. Right. Uh, I've been to CA multiple times to ball games. And it appears to me you've got all those ingredients. Uh, I do. I do. I have every one of them that you mentioned. And uh, we feel like Columbia Academy is a special place. Uh, it has a lot to offer, not just athletics. And we do a lot in not just football. Uh, we've had success in all of our athletics. Uh, but the academics, the service opportunities, uh, the Christian environment, if, if that's what you're looking for, uh, Columbia Academy is definitely a place that you would you would want to check out. What attracted you to CAA? Because most of your career has been south of us in the state of Alabama. Uh, right. What, I, what brought you to Columbia to take that job? Well, uh, actually the campus and, and having friends that I went to college with. Uh, you know, I, relationships go a long sure. way. Uh, that's a big part of it and who you know. 
and uh, there were a lot of good people that I, I went to school with in college and uh, they were working at that school and, and that told me that that school uh, is a good place to be and uh, just having those relationships opened up op opportunities for me and uh, I took advantage of it and uh, I'm glad I did. Well, we're glad you came here tonight. You brought a couple of your promising players with you that are freshmen. I think you said one of them uh, actually sees quite a bit of action for you all this year, maybe a starter. Yes, yes. I brought my son uh, with me tonight and uh, his friend, and, uh, and they're both part of a, a freshman class. It's going to be something uh, to watch in the future. Awesome. Charlie Lansdell, the head football coach at Columbia Academy, our special guest in this first segment. Uh, they take on Huntland, and then we'll be at home a week from Friday night for first-round right. action uh, in the playoffs. Good luck to you, Coach. I appreciate it. We're going to take a break now. Look at some highlights of the uh, Lebanon versus Nashville Overton game, and we'll be back with more of the high school sports page brought to you by the Burns Insurance Group right after this.